Hello, um, welcome. I'm Meredith Devonair, and this week I thought I would do a short introduction to da -da 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 Tales from Tantamount. Ooh, I just want to take a moment to look at this cover because I love it. It's by Tom and Nimue Brown, and the I just the detail is lovely. I don't think it comes across well on my video, but like the magpie has this lovely little sparkle in their eye. Uh, this is the carrion, <laughs> who I never properly describe in Tantamount. Um, and if you look closely at the well, I think on this you should be able to see that someone, someone is climbing out of the well. Ha! <laughs> I love it. Um, so. Yeah, I think the easiest way, again, to do this is I'll just read you the beginning. Um, and then, you know, if you're enjoying these videos, I can do some other little videos about the writing process, etc. Mm -hmm. um, let me know if you're interested in that. <laughs> so, um, Tantamount is, is really different from The Life and Times of Angel Evans in that The Life and Times of Angel Evans is a short story with very clear main character and kind of a plot. Tales from Tantamount is, um, I suppose, epistolary, although it's, um, rather than being letters, it is things found around the town, usually on the community notice boards, but sometimes, um, things... Uh, sort of, you know, signs and notices that the, the Tantamount District Council have have put up and, like, adverts for things going. Um, if you live in a place that's anywhere like me, you'll be really familiar with kind of all those notice boards that are just, like, covered in things, strange adverts and looking for somewhere to live and that kind of thing. So it's, it's basically, it's like you're getting a selection of those things from a community notice board or various community notice boards um, around this imaginary town and it's a very weird town um, history is kind of alive and fights back and um, and it's not geographically fixed it moves around and they have seasonal witches and all sorts of stuff um, uh, if plot is your big thing that you want in a book this is probably not for you if slightly ephemeral ephemeral? I don't know what happened when I tried to say that word. Um, moving on, weirdness is, is, is more your thing and you quite like just um, oddness and setting and having to sort of puzzle out what's going on and puzzle out what you think is going on, uh, then definitely this is for you. Um, but yeah, um, so um, this is on my blog for free so I was originally I was blogging this um so if you are a skint person you can get this it's okay it's all on my blog and you can just buy me a coffee whenever you're able to and if you are not able to don't worry I understand um if you have some money and you want to buy it you can either get a nice paperback version like this or you can get um an equally nice ebook version um and you will also get some extra shiny content um having spent money on that so there is there are things in the book which are not available for free which I sort of wrote afterwards to, to put in here when I decided I was gonna self-publish it and it's on Amazon so with no further ado Tales from Tantamount month one December of the year of the abandoned shopping trolley most of this takes place in the year of the sad plastic bag, so those are the jokes you may or may not have seen going around, but the first month is December, and that is the year of the, the abandoned shopping trolley. Tantamount. Adjective. Equal in seriousness to. Italian. Tantamontere. Amount to much. Noun. A small, strange town, somewhere near the seven, known to move about. Welcome to Tantamount. Population undefined slash nebulous. Visitors to Tantamount are required to attend the orientation classes held at the Tourist Information Centre. Failure to attend these classes will be punished by carrion. 
tantamount takes no responsibility for injury, loss of life, spiritual dislocation or other harm caused to visitors who have not attended orientation. We hope you enjoy your stay, tantamount tourist board. Do not feed the maillards. Tantamount has a serious maillard problem. Please do not exacerbate it by feeding them. Maillids are quickly driving out the native dryads in the area and feeding maillids will undermine our conservation work. Maillids are encouraged to remain in their own trees. Many thanks, Tantamount District Council. Proverb of the day. To have time, you have to make time. Chinese found on a tea bag in a bin outside the Pinprick Cafe. Tantamount District Council hopes that, in this difficult time, you will take some comfort from this proverb of the day. Tantamount District Council would also like to remind all residents that feeding time for carrion is at 9.49pm sharp, and we advise residents to stay clear of the designated feeding zones at this time. Many thanks, Tantamount District Council. A short history of Tantamount, as recounted by A. Larksbjörn, infamous historian to a live audience shortly before she fell foul of dislocation. History in Tantamount is notable due to its capricious nature. Native residents of Tantamount often find it hard to believe that in other places, history sits still and allows itself to be merely observed. Here, history is alive. It moves. It changes daily depending on current and future trends. The current founding history of Tantamount is much unchanged, as the records are held in a dead zone. This means that it only changes in extreme circumstances. Other details are more changeable. For example, at the moment the earliest records of Tantamount are of a village that resisted Roman invaders. In fact, the Romans believed it to be cursed and would not go near it. The natives knew it as Unger, or possibly Ungernuk, although this could be a misspelling. It was left alone by common consent. There is currently a dispute as to whether Tantamount eventually capitulated. The Italian-based name suggests that it did, but there is little other evidence. Perennially, it seems that Tantamount moved for some time in order to be part of the Dane law and currently that is very strongly favoured, although the evidence for this tends to vanish at full moon. There is, of course, a founding myth. This myth goes that a tribe were lost and wandering in a storm. They prayed, and something delivered them. In most versions, it, it is a female something. For many years, there was prosperity, and then someone did something. This varies greatly. The chief refused to sacrifice his bull. The chief's daughter sacrificed the chief's bull without permission. The chief tried to sacrifice his daughter, who was then turned into a bull. Somehow, insult was caused. In almost every version, the daughter is transformed into a magpie or a bull. Tantamount was cursed to wander, or was blessed with wandering, or was simply cast out by the something. Of course, with the advent of the internet and other... At this point, A. Larksbjörn is attacked by a violent fit of dislocation. The crowd summoned a first aider, who performed a lovely song. But the dislocation was of such strength that A. Larksbjörn was lost. A memorial to her stands in the town centre. It sings at 43 minute intervals. So there you go, that's the first little bit of Tales from Tantamount. I hope you enjoyed it. You can continue reading this um, on my blog or you can buy the ebook or the paperback um, on Amazon. Um, and uh, <laughs> some of you are requesting, um, this is my sock. This is the sock update. <laughs> I made this lovely introduction video to my writing and you want to know what's happened with the sock. So here is the sock. I've done a very little bit of knitting on it. I will continue to update you on the sock. Thank you very much. That is the end of the video.